given me uh, more time to prepare and more time to pray over this. And I will tell you something. Um, as I finished up last Saturday night, very, very late, I had the feel, I, honestly, I had the feeling in my heart, I feel like I'm, I'm not quite ready for this yet. And yet I had prepared, it had been in my heart, I had been working on it all week, but I felt in my heart like, I feel like I'm, I haven't quite got my teeth into it yet. And the Lord knew that, and he had to keep me in bed. Um, so I wish he had just said, Jennifer, tell Pastor Renee to speak so that I wouldn't have. <laughs> but anyhow, um, but as I said at the beginning, thank you so much for your care and for your love. I really felt it. I really felt it this last week. Um, and I'm almost 100%. And if I don't hug you this morning, it's because I still want to be a little bit careful. I don't want to, don't want to pass anything on just in case, uh, just in case it's contagious. I was sure it was food poisoning. I was sure that's what it was, but apparently other people are catching the same thing, so it can't be food poisoning. So, but um, I want to this morning. Uh, we turn to the Word of God. I believe this is this is something God has put on my heart. It's been for two or three weeks now, and um, so I want to to we're going to move into sort of an introduction and the beginnings of it. And for the next few weeks, we will be we'll be camping on this topic, and God's going to be. I believe he's going to be speaking to us. So I want to ask you this, something this morning. What are your plans and goals and hopes for 2015? We're still in January, first day of February, aren't we? January is gone. Can you believe it? First month, already gone. Do you have some plans for 2015? Have you looked ahead to December 30th and thought, when I reach the end of the, this year, this is what I want to have accomplished? This is what I want to have done. This is how I want to be different. This is how I want things to have changed. Or some of you may be saying, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm seeking God's will. I, I want to know what God's will is for my life, life. Let me tell you something this morning. I haven't talked with many of you, but I can already tell you something this morning. I already know God's will for you in 2015. Did you know that? God's already spoken to me. I already know what it is. You say, oh, Pastor Jennifer, be careful. I know what God's will is for you. You may be a baby Christian. You may be a very mature Christian. You may be involved deeply in ministry. You may be sitting on the sidelines. But I know what God's will is for you. And it's found in the Word of God. And so we're going to look this morning at some, at some scriptures and you decide with me what God's will is for you in 2015. You know, as pastors, I think Pastor Renee and I both would say, the question we are asked when we have counseling or things like that, the question we are asked more than any other question is, I want to know what God's will is. What should I do? I want to know God's will for my life. Brothers and sisters, here is God's will for your life for 2015. So I want us to look at some scriptures this morning, and then you tell me what God's will is for you and for me. Let's look at some. Okay. Here we go from Ephesians 1. By the way, if you like great prayers, the best prayers you will read outside of what Jesus prayed, as we read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're found in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3. Wonderful, wonderful prayers. The prayers of Paul for all believers and for you and me. Here's part of one. So here we see in Ephesians 1. Ephesians, the church at Ephesus was sort of the... They were the most mature. Many people would have considered them the most solid. And here is the prayer for the most mature of believers. Here's Paul's prayer from God's throne and God's heart. To them. Here's what he prays. Let's go a little bit further to the Philippians, a very different church at Philippi from the church at, at Ephesus. The Philippian believers had gone through and were going through terrible, uh, terrible trials of poverty and suffering. So a very different type of church from the church at Ephesus. And yet, what do we see in Paul's prayer? Ah, something very, very similar. Okay, then we move forward. Here is a, a different person writing, not Paul, but Peter. And what do we see in 1 Peter 2.2? 2, 2. And Peter is writing to, not to any one particular place, but he's writing to Christians in general. And what does he say? 
something very simple, and this is a verse that many of us know very, very well. And Peter writes uh, in, in chapter 2, verse 2, like newborn babies, and then he goes on, he talks about it. And that's something, those of you who are parents, and, and you understand that very well when you read that verse because it's an example <laughs> that is uh, very human and very, very understandable. And then we go to the second letter of Peter, and this is quite a bit later in his life, uh, still to believers across across Asia, if you want to look at it in that way. And Peter, we know, wrote to everyone, but he wrote primarily, wrote more to Jews than Paul did, uh, more, to, more to Jewish believers than Paul did. And this letter comes, Second Peter, as far as we know, was written very late in the life of Peter. This is shortly, uh, not a long time before he is, uh, he is martyred for the sake of his Lord Jesus Christ, where he failed at the beginning of his walk with the Lord, at the end of his life, he stood firm. Isn't that encouraging? Have you failed before? Yes. I have. I've blown it. But let me tell you something. You keep walking with God, and where you have been weak before, God will make you strong. Where you have been fearful before, God will make you brave. You hang on to God. God's not going to give up on you, and your life can be a testimony just as Peter's was. He's not somebody different. I, that's why I often say I like Peter so much because he's so human, isn't he? And so here we see Peter shortly before the end of his life. And if you'll notice, early in his life, 1 Peter, late in his life, 2 Peter, same prayer. Same prayer, okay? And then we go to... Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Wow, a very different church indeed. Cor the Corinthian church was a church, as some of us who have studied, studied the Bible know, a, a church that considered itself very, very spiritual. All the spiritual gifts were, whoa, they were operating. I mean, they were, they would be the super duper charismatic church on every TV, Christian TV channel. That's, that's the, that would be the Corinthian church. It really would be, and yet Paul knew that they were still very lacking in, as far as really growing up in God and in stability and maturity, very different from the Ephesus church. And yet, what does he write to them? And if we look at all five of these situations, all of them different, we see one theme, don't we? We see one goal, we see one prayer, we see one aim. These men who had touched the heart of God and received God's word and message and encouragement for the people. And what is it? It's the same every time. What is it? We can say it in one word. What is that word? Growth. growth. One more time. Can you see it? Okay, growth. Look all the way through. Some of you said, wait, 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 I didn't see it. Okay, take a moment and look. And um, there, that word is used in different ways. Sometimes the word is used differently. It may not always be there. But just take a quick look. And he, they express grow in different ways. Here, grow in your knowledge of God. And then over here, growing in knowledge and understanding. That's the Philippian church going through, uh, going through uh, hardship and great poverty. Come to Peter where you will grow into a full experience. Oh, I love that one. We may not get that far this morning, but I love this verse. The full experience of salvation. Isn't that great? How many of you have found God is really good? Yes? Amen. Guess what? He's better than you know. Because we're still growing into a full experience of salvation. Those of you that are young <laughs> Christians or baby Christians this morning, guess what? God has a full experience. You say, but oh, it's so wonderful. God is so great. Oh, there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more. For those of us who are Christians and have been Christians for a while, we sometimes get a little bit complacent, don't we? We sometimes kind of, our Christian lives get a little boring day by day by day. God has a full experience of salvation for us yet, and we've not yet arrived. So we see it there. And then he says, and then down here, so as you grow in your knowledge of God. And when we get into this, not this week, this whole knowledge of God, we'll talk about that a little bit more because when Peter and Paul and others talk about this, they're not really, not really talking about no more, no more, no more, no more. That's not really what it means. And so we'll look at that as we get into it. And then down here, we see it again. 
grow to maturity. And so here is God's will for you. You were wondering? Now you know. Okay, next slide. God's will is for you in 2015 to grow. Okay, so growth ahead. Oh God, help us that when we come to the end of 2015, in about 11 months from now, that there will be growth in our lives, that there will be growth. This is God's plan for you. This is God's plan for me. And so, this is what we're going to be looking at. Uh, go ahead and put up the next slide, Miss Heidi. So, we're going to be talking about how we grow. And I specifically chose the pronoun we instead of you. You know, it's easy for pastors, not preachers, and I, I'm try, I try to be careful these days in, to not say you very much, because if I say you, that means, you know, Pastor Jennifer's so spiritual <laughs> and mature. She understands it all. She's got it all together. I, I, I never fall short. But Paul makes it very clear, and the writers make it very clear, we are in this together. I'm probably further down the road than you because I've been a Christian a long time, and I've been walking with the Lord a long time, but it's the same road, brothers and sisters. It's the same road for every one of us, and God wants us going down this road. So we're going to be looking at how we grow. Now, when I, when I talk about something like this, and I do believe this is God's message for us as we start in the beginning, because we are all such different people, our minds start thinking in different ways as we look at this topic. Some of you are very analytical. Maybe you are engine, have an engineering background or mathematically inclined, or you are a person on the computer. You just love Excel, right? You just, you, some of you are saying, what? Those of you who are Excel, you know what I mean, right? You know, when Sister Julie and I get together, and Melrose as well, oh, they'll just work on it. They'll say, oh, well, Sister well, Jennifer, just do, just do this. You need to put it in Excel. And I'll look at her and I'll say, huh? <laughs> and I'll try to work on it, and I'll just th forget this, because I'm a Word person. <laughs> I'm a Word document. And that's, that is who I am. And honestly, that's how God has made me. And we, we come to this, how we grow, and we come differently. And those of us that tend to be a little more analytical or step-by-step, -step, we start looking at something like this, and we start thinking, great. Give me the how-to, Pastor Jen. Give me the one, two, three. What do I do first? Okay, the next step. But you know what? It's not really like that because growth is not a one, two, three. It's really not. It's really not. Then there are those of us that are maybe our personalities are a little bit different and our, our, we're feeling and, you know, we're, we're word people or whatever. And we may look at this and to be really honest with you, some of us come to this and we have a very different feeling and we are people, perhaps because of our background um, or because of the way that we are, we come to something like this and we tend to come with a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt. And I want to talk about that and that's really who we're going to talk more about this morning. Because when we look at this, when we come to this topic, a lot of us immediately think, oh, Oh, oh God, I knew you were going to talk to me today. It's true, I haven't grown. I know I, need, I, I know I need to pray more. Oh, I know I'm not reading my Bible enough. And we carry a big bag of guilt around with us, don't we? And we just fill it up. We go, oh, yes, it's for me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. As I was preparing yesterday, since I had more time, um, I was reading online. I thought, well, let me look online and, and see, uh, um, just see what others say about that. And I just typed in, how Christians grow. And I hadn't looked online at all before that. I had been digging in the Word uh, only and hadn't looked online. And I came across this particular article that quoted um, a, uh, uh, a classic Christ a pre a present day Christian theologian, Dallas Willard. Um, and he said, he said, when people talk to me about growth, he said, we always think, oh, okay, I should pray more, I should read the Bible more, yes? And those are things that every one of us could say, yes, I should, and we tend to feel guilt in those areas. But it was interesting because he said, when I think of that, he said, my question is this, for example, at the end of 2015, am I more patient with people or less patient with people? 
<laughs> That's his question for growth. Not, am I now reading the Bible more chapters a day, praying more a day, and am I less irritable or more irritable? And he said, those are the questions I think about when I think about, am I growing in the Lord? And I kind of thought, ouch, <laughs> ouch a lot. Um, but that fit in so well with what the Lord had been putting on my heart, because we're going to talk about grace this morning. And we come to this topic and we think, oh, doesn't feel like a lot of grace, does it? But we're going to look at this, and we're not going to talk about, oh, I have to try harder, I must do this or I must do that. That's what I tend to do, because there are areas of my life as a pastor that I know are not yet where they should be. And I'll be real honest with you, because of my, partly because of my upbringing and because of who I am, I tend to be one of those Christians that carries a bag of guilt. Uh, about what I should do and how I should be, how how I should be as a Christian and how I'm not as a Christian, and when I start dealing with guilt, I don't know about you. But when I start dealing with guilt, my response to guilt is greater self-effort. Have you found that to be true? Our response to guilt is usually greater self-effort, and if that's the rut that we get stuck in, or the trap that we get, that we that we go, we will never move beyond that and move into the grace that God has for us as He helps us grow. Amen. Amen. As He helps us grow, so that's where we're going to start this morning, and we may not get a lot further than that. But that's at least where we're going to start, and then we'll, we'll go ahead. And we want to begin this morning in the place that we have to begin when we talk about growth. And we have to begin with God. We can't start with yourself. Got to begin with God. Got to begin with God. And I want us to look at Colossians 2.13. 2, this great... We're going to look at some other verses, because Paul writes to the Colossian church a lot. And in the weeks ahead, we'll look at some of them. But the church at Colossae is a church... Paul, had, he'd never been there. His co-worker, Epaphras, or Epaphras, however you want to pronounce it, I, I don't judge, any way you want to say it is okay with me. Um, this was a church he'd never visited, but he'd heard about them, and Epaphras had brought back a wonderful testimony of their lives. And so Paul, inspired of the Holy Spirit, writes to them, and look at what he says, and this is why we have to begin with God. And there are many other verses we could look at in Ephesians and other places, but we're just going to look at this one. Because you and I, when it comes to growth, and in this church this morning, there are all sorts of people. Some of you I've known a long time. You've been Christians a long time. Some of you, I'm sure this morning, you are sort of interested in God or you're coming to church, but you would say, well, I, I'm a churchgoer, but you may not have a relationship with God yet. I know a lot about God. Well, I've been to church before, but you may not yet call yourself a Christian. I don't yet have a relationship with Him. So we've got this whole spectrum here this morning, and that's okay because God welcomes all all of us into his church. It's his church. It's not my church. It's not Pastor Renee's church, although we say our church. This is God's family, and God is the one who welcomes us. And so we're at this big spectrum, but I want to talk to us as we look at this and look at what Paul says. He says, you were dead because of your sins. Think back to the time before you were a Christian. Some of us have been Christians for a long time. Some of us have been religious for a long time. Do you remember when you tried, used to try so hard to be good? Do you remember that? You tried hard and you make resolutions and Friday night and Saturday night would come and you'd break all the resolutions and Sunday morning you'd go to church and you'd pray and ask, oh God, please help me, or you'd go to confession and confess all that you had done and then you'd try to make up for it and then a week later you'd do exactly the same thing. You know why? There was no change. There was no change because you were dead. There was no change because you were dead. And as long as we're dead in our sins, there will be no change. And you may say, but I'm trying really hard. That's great. But a dead dog can't do anything. We can try, but there won't be a change because spiritually we're dead. Is it because we're bad people? No, it's not that. That's not what God's talking about. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but if there is a sin problem in our lives that has not been taken care of, we're dead. We're dead. And if we're dead, we can't change. We can try. We can get religious. 
We can do good deeds. We can give money. We can even pray. And we can even, oh, do all sorts of things. But we don't change because a dead person can't change. A dead person can't change. And so God, in His love and in His mercy and His grace, says to us, you were dead because of your sins, and then I made you alive with Christ, for He forgave all your sins. And so, this morning, if you are trying hard to be a good person, what I want to say to you is this. Give it up and let it go. You will never be able to change until you say, God, spiritually, I'm dead. My heart and my life doesn't have you in me bringing me life. And God says the answer to your problem and the answer to your sin is for Jesus to take care of your sin and to give you life and to give you life. And that's where it begins. And if it doesn't begin there, it doesn't begin. It doesn't begin. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just telling you what God says this morning. So that's where it has to begin. It has to begin with God. God has to make you alive. God has to make me alive. And until He does, forget trying to be good. Forget trying to change. Oh, can we make some improvements in our lives? Sure we can. Sure we can. We all know people who are not Christians who are good people. Yes or no? Yes. yes! Good people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the part of you and me and everyone that will live eternally. And in that part, only God and His life can make a difference. And so, we were dead, but now you're, we're alive because of Christ who forgave gave all of our sins. Now let's move forward, well actually we're moving backwards in the letter, but I want us to move forward in what we're looking at. Paul's writing to them, and in Colossians 1, 6, it's the same church, okay? Look at what he says. I love these verses. I love this verse. Look at it. I have, I've been praying this verse all week long. Look at it with me. Look at what he says. He says, this same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. Stop there for just a minute. Do you remember when the good news came to you? Do you? Yes. Yes. Where were you, Pastor Renee? When it came? Yes. In the hospital room. In a hospital room. The good news, it came. He wasn't pastor then. Mm, far from it. Far from it. But it came to him. It came to him. Going out all over the world. Alistair, where were you? Lighthouse. Lighthouse. Yay. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to say that, but <laughs> thanks for the advert. <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, Esperanza, where were you? Were you in Hong Kong or were you back in, in Guinea, Equatorial Guinea still? Equatorial Guinea. When the good news came. Oh, brothers and sisters, think about that just a minute. And we're all thinking, where are the, were you in Pakistan? Amen. When the good news came to you. And brothers and sisters, it's the same good news. Oh, in Canada, in Pakistan, in Equatorial Guinea, in Lighthouse. It, the, the circumstances and the situation, it doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter how difficult it is. It doesn't matter if it's Saudi Arabia. It doesn't matter if it's Muslims. It doesn't matter if it's Buddhist. It doesn't matter if it's atheist because the Word of God is the same Word of God. It's the same Word of God. And the Word of God, wherever it goes, in the power of the Holy Spirit, it does the same thing. It does the same thing. So there will be some cultural differences, but in essence, in essence, a Pakistani Christian is going to look the same as a Christian from Equatorial Guinea, an Equatorial Guinean Christian, okay? Or a Canadian Christian, or an American Christian, or an Icelandic Christian, because where the Word of God goes out, it is His life. It's not man's life. It's not man's message. It is the Word of God. And the Word of God goes out all over the world. Doesn't that excite you? It excites me. 
It excites me. The word of God that changed me is the same word of God that is changing lives in North Korea this morning. And it's bringing fruit. And Paul says it's bearing fruit everywhere. It's bearing fruit everywhere. There's no place where the enemy can close a door so strong that the word of God cannot penetrate. You say, yes, but Christians can't go there. Huh? Prayer can go there. Prayer can go there. And the word of God, and he lets us be part of that. He lets us be part of that. And the word of God, it's going out all, over all the world. It's bearing fruit. Okay, so the word of God starts bearing fruit. What does that fruit look like? They will all be like lighthouse. No. No. Lighthouse is lighthouse. Other places are other places. It's not going to look like that. What, it's what is it going to look like as it bears fruit? What is it? Changed lives. Changed lives. Changed lives. There is the fruit initially of salvation. That first growth. There has to be life. Has to begin somewhere. So changing lives. And then Paul doesn't stop there. I love it. You know, we Christians are so independent. We Christians are so... Oh my goodness, I just saw the time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never mind. We'll keep going. We'll stop on page two. <laughs> We're so exclusive. We're so protected. Wait, don't start putting your bags up yet. Let's keep going for a while. We've still got time. We're so protective. We're so this way. We're so that way. Paul didn't preach that way, and he didn't look at it that way. He says it's bearing fruit everywhere. Ch lives are being changed around the world, and then look at what he says. Just as it changed your lives... Just to, He puts us together. We're all in the family of God. We're in the family of God. Do different churches have different understandings? Yes, they do. Do we look at some scriptures this way and that way? Sure, we do. I tell you what, there are some churches that if a woman pastor stood in the pulpit, oh my goodness, people would get up and walk out. In fact, I've been in a service before where somebody got up and walked out. Praise the Lord, we're not like that here. But God... Paul didn't do that. He brought people together. He said their lives were changed just as your life was changed. Just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and what? Understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. Do you remember when you first heard and really understood God's grace? And you understood, oh, it's not what I am trying to do. Oh, it's not my good deeds. Oh, it's not my trying to be holy and my righteousness. Here is the message. Here is the truth of God's wonderful grace. It is that we were sinners, that you were a sinner, that I was a sinner, and God said you're dead and you can't help yourself, but I love you and I send you my one and only Son. And Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world. What does it say? But that the world through Him might believe, might be saved. He condemns no one. He doesn't have to. We're already condemned without Jesus. We're already. And Paul says, you're part of that. You're part of that. You heard and understood. Do you remember? Do you remember when you really understood the grace of God? Do you remember that? <gasps> Oh, God, there's hope for me. Oh, God, I can give up all that self-effort, all that striving, all that guilt, and the grace of God. Now, there's a part that we have, and we're going to get into that. So if you think, some of you may be thinking, yes, but Pastor Jennifer, what about our part? We have a part. We have a part. But it does not begin with us. It begins with God and His grace. And that is, where gr that is where growth begins. And the reason I've camped on this for a long time is because when your Christian life began, it did not begin through self-effort. It did not begin through trying harder to be better. It did not begin through, I'm going to reform. It began with God and His grace in your life. And brothers and sisters, doesn't it make sense that the way your life in God begins would be the way that your life continues? Yes or no? Yes. 
Yes, so often we become Christians and then we think, now I must work very hard, I must be holy. You know, and we try to be holy, right? And I'm not, you know that I am serious. You know that I'm serious, but we try so hard, I'm going to be holy, I'm going to be holy. And we lose, and we lose sight of the grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God. So that's where we begin. But our part, and this is what we're going to be looking at in next week and the week ahead, we must respond to the grace of God. We must work with the grace of God. We must cooperate with the grace of God. And if we don't, we won't get anywhere. We won't get anywhere. We cooperate. And so as we begin, I, I, in this week ahead, I challenge you and I exhort you. Talk to God about this and say, God, would you start helping me to understand? God, I want to see your part. God, I want to understand my part. Because brothers and sisters, He has given you the wonderful privilege and the awesome responsibility of participating in growth, in growth. And if you don't participate, if I don't participate, I'm not going to grow. And so there's God's part and there's our, our part. And we're going to look at how that works. What does the scripture say? There's no place, there's no need for guilt. There's no need for self-effort, because self-effort will never, there's no place for that with grace. But there is a part. And we're going to be looking at how we grow. I don't know about you. I I'll close with this. I'll, I'll close with this. This is not something I wanted to share, but I'm going to share it. And I'll tell the first service. And I've got some other things. I won't show that slide this week, Pastor Renee. In my life, I've been a Christian and a pastor for a long time, and God's been dealing with me. This is very personal, but I'm going to share it. We all know we're not perfect, and as God has been dealing with me, during the time of fasting and prayer, God put a prayer in my heart for me, for myself. And I was praying for you, and I've been praying for family members who are not Christians, but I, I, I was praying for me. I want to be a better pastor. I want, to, I, I want to be, not like, oh, I want to be better. It's not, not a light thing. I, I want to be the pastor that God has called me to be, that He's planned for me to be. And, and, and one of the areas, the prayer that God put in my heart was this. I, I pray, but you know what? I want to pray more. I really do. I want to pray more. And you know what the prayer God gave me? And so, you can, if, you, if you're praying for me, that's something you can pray. I have been praying, God, make me a person of prayer. God, make me a person of prayer. At this point, almost not a day goes by that I don't pray that. At this point, almost not a prayer goes by that I don't pray that at some point as I'm praying, as I'm driving down the highway, Tolo Harbor, I'll be praying for you or praying for my brother or praying for some, somebody else. And at some point, I'll throw in there, and God, make me a person of prayer. And I'm not trying to shock you and say, well, Pastor Jennifer, you don't pray? I do pray. But I want to pray more. I want to grow in that area. And you know what I used to do? I used to say, okay, I will pray at this time. And then I'd start to pray and I'd look at my watch to make sure I was praying, you know, long enough. Because if you pray, you know, if you only pray this time, that's not very spiritual. You should pray more. And I'd look at my watch. I'd make schedules. And if I didn't meet the schedule, oh, I'd be so guilty. And I'd try harder the next time. Forget that. I have started praying, God, make me a person of prayer. And you say, yes, but Pastor Jennifer, you have a part. I do have a part. But you know what? If God doesn't help me, I'm not, I'm not going to change. And so I've just started praying, God, make me a person of prayer. Make me a person of prayer. Make me a pastor, really a pastor of prayer. A pastor of prayer. And, and that means, God, I'm going to work with you, but God, if you don't, it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So I encourage you, as we close right now, you say, oh, if Pastor Jennifer's praying that, what should I be praying? God can tell you what to pray, but I encourage you this week, give up on the guilt and the self-effort and the I should do this and I should do that. Forget the should and instead start saying, God, 
I want to grow. God, I want to grow. I want to grow. Lord, we come to you this morning as we come to the end of our, our time together. God, we want to grow. Lord, we don't usually want to tell other people our areas of growth. And sometimes, God, we don't even know what those areas are. And sometimes we know very well. But God, we want to grow. And Lord, we, we Father, we don't want to stay baby Christians. Or Lord, we don't want to stay mature Christians stuck at a level and satisfied with where we are. But Lord, we want to with our hearts and our desire and our aim and our target towards you this year, Lord, to be what your plan for us is. Whatever our circumstances, just like all of these New Testament Christians, Lord, whatever we're going through, whatever we're going through, whatever age we are, whatever we other things we may have going in, on in our lives, Lord, we want to grow. We want to grow. And Lord, we want you to grow us. And Lord, we want to say today, we're going to cooperate with you. Show us how. Lord, where we're stubborn, God, just put your finger on that area of stubbornness or hardness. But Lord, we want to go with you. We want to grow, Lord. And Father, we know, Lord, we know that when our desire meets your plan, nothing is impossible. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you.